I just didn't speak loud enough saying thank you. The title for today is Healing, Just Do It. How many need a physical healing, say, from diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol? Or maybe you need a healing for mental, for focus, for clarity, worry or fear. Or maybe an emotional healing is in order from jealousy, anxiety, or anger. Or maybe it's all three. Say, because you exhibit food abuse, alcohol abuse, power abuse, an emotional addiction, or what I perceive as the new one, a smartphone addiction. Today, we mainly think of healing through the power of drugs, or at least that's what TV would have us think. Joe's on meds too. I'm not sure you've heard that commercial. This fall though, on the Learning Channel, there was another type of healing. It was called the healer. Charlie Goldsmith used his hands to generate a healing energy, and he was able to heal people that the doctors had been unable to heal. In 2018, yes, we do have medicines that do heal. We also have alternative health, such as chiropractic services, acupuncture, massage. We have energy work workers, such as Palma, Sharon, myself. Um, a massage therapist is Trish. So we also have, still have the mysteries of God. Out of curiosity, does anyone know which president of the United States was the first to be born in a hospital? It was Jimmy Carter in 1924. And actually, his birth in a hospital would have been more unusual than usual. So with that tidbit of information, let's take a look at Unity's history. Myrtle and Charles Fillmore attended a lecture from E.B. Weeks in 1886. And out of that lecture, Myrtle came out with a fire, knowing that she could heal herself from tuberculosis. And she had an affirmation that she used and she was able to heal herself from tuberculosis when most people at the time died from it. Charles had one leg shorter than the other because of an accident. So he was able to discard braces and canes and walk most of the time normally, we'll say, from his healing efforts. The thing that Myrtle used as an affirmation was, I am a child of God and therefore do not inherit sickness. The affirmation combined with faith, constant repetition is what healed Myrtle. And then through the word of mouth, people started showing up at the Fillmore home and they held prayer circles in the living room, or as it would have been known in that day, the parlor. And later, individuals went to the Unity office on Wabash. Later yet, Myrtle met every day at 10 a.m. in the prayer chapel to hold healing services. And then they also published their uh, healing testimonies in the Unity magazine of that time. James Dillett Freeman wrote The House of Faith, and he attributes the healing atmosphere to a creative silence consecrated to a spirit of oneness with God, the God of life, whose power can bring perfection to mind and body and or consciousness of life. Again, the attributes of the healing atmosphere to a creative silence 
concentrate, consecrated to a spirit of oneness with the God of life, whose power can bring perfection to mind and body or consciousness of life. I spent many years of my life searching for healing systems, healing techniques, because of pain that resulted from a 1972 back surgery. Despite being a student of unity, I kept chasing after another healing system, another technique. Almost in all of those healing systems that I studied, it, there was the power of meditation. I was told to meditate in almost every system I studied. And any one of those healing systems would have worked if I'd had the faith to make it work, if I had believed in me. I ask you not to be like me, but to be like the Fillmores. So where did Charles and Myrtle get their faith to heal? Well, from the Bible, of course. So if you'll pick up your program, your, your bulletin, and on this page there are three Bible verses and then a quote from a lecture. <coughs> For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Matthew 18.20. The Fillmores gathered people together in healing circles and later in the prayer room at the church. They exhibited that where two or more are gathered. The next one. The woman had faith she would be healed by touching the robe of Jesus. And Jesus responded, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you whole. And that is from not Matthew 9, 22. How did the woman know she would be healed? By touching the robe of Christ. Could she see a healing presence? Could she see a healing energy? Or maybe it was desperation that created her faith. Or word of mouth? It was Myrtle's faith in prayer and dedication to daily prayer that created a manifested energy to make her whole. Number three, pleasant words are honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Proverbs 16.24. That is an affirmation from Christian healing. Charles Fillmore put it in there, put it in his book. I see it as a picturesque affirmation. Can you see the honeycomb? The sweet to the soul and the healing to the bones? And the last one is the quote that from a Charles lecture in 1963. And Christian healing is not merely physical healing but a complete cleansing of the body and mind through the higher law of spirit. The ills are a direct result of sin, not moral delinquencies, but mistakes or failure to recognize divine law. So I have sinned because I have believed in illness. Because of my understanding, any healing that may occur, I will reproduce the condition. Let's listen to that sentence again. Because of my understanding, any healing that may occur, I will reproduce the condition. The permanent healing comes through a change of mind. So how do I get a change of mind? Because when I read that, I, reckon, I went, boy, oh boy, have I sinned. I have believed in pain, so I've had pain. When I read, I have sinned because I have believed in sickness, I'm sure my eyes were as big as saucers. Because it was just like, wow, he really said that? I've had the inconsistent thoughts. Some days I was strong in saying, I have no pain. Using affirmations, using denials. Some days 
I hobbled around like an old, old, old woman. And then I also had inconsistent actions. I knew that if I exercised and made my body strong, I would not have pain. But some days, oh, I'm too tired to exercise today. Oh, I have too much to do. I don't have time to exercise today. Thus, I have reproduced the pain. So how do I change my mind? Maybe if I look at the Fillmore's, I can get an answer. How do I get the power of healing that Myrtle had? What was the Fillmore process? When I looked at Analyze the Process, I, I see three things that they did or had. Daily meditation, they had faith, and now my mind's blank, <laughs> and denials and affirmations. Daily meditation, Myrtle sat with an empty chair across from her, and she imagined no, she knew that the Christ was sitting across from her when she prayed. When she used her affirmation, I am a child of God and therefore do not inherit sickness. She sat in the same chair at the same time every day. That's step number one in meditation. And by doing so, she created the silence, concentrated, consecrated to a spirit of a oneness with God. The second step in the meditative process is relaxing the mind and body. Relaxing the body for me has usually been easy. Tense a muscle and release a muscle, going from bottom to top. Relaxing the mind, <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> My mind races. Sometimes when you hear me talk, you use, hear the beginning of one word and the ending of another word. To me, that's a racing mind. My mind likes to be busy, busy, busy. It likes to solve problems. So sitting down to meditate was frequently a futile exercise. Certainly not rewarding for me. So how do I distract my mind to become still and know? Sometimes flowing classical music worked. It wasn't music that I could sing along to. It wasn't music that had a dramatic ebb and flow to it, but something lilting and flowing. Other times, reading worked. Picking up a spiritual book, the Bible, the daily word, and reading from it. And that would allow my mind to explore and discover something in that reading and then get to that meditative state that I wanted to get to. But I can't always control my darting, leapfrogging mind. So frequently meditation was frustrating, and anxiety written. So how did I get rid of frustration and anxiety? Sometimes I gave myself permission not to meditate. That makes it easy. Sometimes I accepted that a two minute meditation was an adult meditation. Sometimes after repeating the affirmation numerous times, I fell asleep. That was my favorite. All three of those, though, do not generate that creative silence. It doesn't create the holy presence. And therefore, I cannot receive a spiritual download. To me, that's what meditation is all about. So the, to me, the best thing that works for me is that reading, allowing the mind to focus on something, something spiritual in nature, 
and then let it explore and let it discover. And then I can become still and know I can get into that meditative state. The second step for Charles and Myrtle was denials and affirmations. In the email that you received this week, there was four denials that were in there by Emily Cady from Lessons in Truth. Emily Cady said, use these four denials seven several times, not seven, several times throughout the day, and it will deepen your wisdom and understanding. The first denial, there is one power in the universe, and that is God, good. God is good, and God is omnipresent. Today, we would say it, there is one presence in the universe, God the good, omnipotent. Two, there is no absence of life, substance, or intelligence anywhere. And I think we found science to prove that to be true. The third denial was pain, sickness, poverty, old age, and death cannot master me, for they are not real. So for me, my denial needs to be pain cannot master me, for it is not real. The fourth denial. There is nothing in all the universe for me to fear, for greater is God that is within me than fear that is in the world. Katie says, say these several times throughout the day. Why? Why are we saying denials? We're saying denials to erase our erroneous thinking. Now, I don't have time to exercise today. There's a denial for that, <laughs> so that I erase the erroneous thinking, and then I can follow up the denial with the affirmation, the affirmation that will create the mind condition that I want and need. For her, Myrtle, again, I am a child of God, therefore I do not inherit sickness. For me, I am a child of God, I do not inherit pain. Maybe for you, I am a child of God, and therefore I do not inherit anger. Affirmations are a strength within unity. The third thing that made all of this work for the Fillmores was their unwavering faith. Faith that, heal, that healing would occur. So may I suggest a just do it attitude? Not a command, just do it, but a playful, just do it. That gives you permission to explore and discover how all of this will work for you. A just do it playful attitude to discover how to meditate, how it best works for you how to use denials and affirmations, how to modify your faith to make it stronger. So I suggest that you take any one of the three that you think is your weakness and go play with it. Just do it. Take the time. Invest in yourself. Meditate. Use denials and affirmations and strengthen your faith. Play, play on. So it's time now that we can just do it by moving into the meditation section of our service today. We can practice, practice, practice and get to our individual Carnegie Hall of spiritual awareness awakening and aptitude in this perfect time to advance. So during the meditation, I will use the affirmation, I am at peace. If you have an affirmation that you'd like to use, the key to you using it is, I affirm. You will hear, I affirm, I am at peace. That's your key to using your own affirmation. 
And then the other thing about the meditation today is there will be three separate periods of silence. So if in that time that your mind wanders off a little bit, not to worry, use your affirmation to come back to your meditation. <laughs>